We're using them now more so than ever for social distancing, for our meals, and to protect us from COVID-19. So I've been doing some counting, or rather some reflecting, and this is how much plastic I use each week during the COVID-19 period. Plastic bags, food containers and bottles, I've used about 50% more than usual. But I'm just one person. I want to know how bad Singapore's plastic usage has become since we started our fight against the pandemic and what we can do about it. It's not uncommon for people to queue for popular food places or even supermarkets. But have you ever heard of people queuing for plastic? That happened at Pacific Packaging, a local plastic distributor. In April, snaking queues formed outside their warehouse at Yishun, a unique phenomenon for managing director Chan Guan Kun. I'm meeting him to find out just how much plastic is being sold since the COVID-19 outbreak. Mr. Chan. Hey, hello. Hi. Yeah. So tell me about these long queues that formed outside your warehouse in April. From here, just to our uh, what is the actual increase in the sales of your plastic products during the COVID outbreak? 我想应该最少也增加了 30-50% of the plastic product in COVID period. 在开始的时候，这个是封包式卖的非常的多，因为打包菜饭呢，他们都是用这个。接下来大家就开始用这种microwave container去包食物，这些价格上也便宜。多数的客户、hawker、restaurant都是选择这一类型的产品比较多了。But now we're allowed to dine out, so is the demand still high? 目前为止用量还是非常的多。Hygiene is so paramount that some retailers are even rejecting reusable containers and cups for takeaways. The reason? To eliminate the risk of cross-contamination. But is that a valid concern? I'm meeting a doctor this afternoon. Today is his lucky day. He managed to use his reusable container. I've learned that some F&B shops have yes. stopped allowing reusable containers yes. and cups. Is this valid? Well, the fact that I brought mine along tells you that I do not believe it is valid. COVID-19 is a respiratory virus. So when you speak loudly, when you sing, that is when COVID-19 becomes very successful in spreading from one person to another. So if I were to order my food using right. this container, I'm yes. not shouting my order. And you're wearing a mask, but that's one condition. Okay. And the condition is that you must make sure that this is clean. And it's very easy to clean, right? You just need water and detergent. So even if the virus is on the container and little bits of it are there, we still have our immune system, right, to fight. For the F&B industry, single-use plastics might seem like the safer option, but for those in healthcare, it's a matter of life and death. And Dr. Ko is about to reveal how much more plastic usage has increased in the healthcare industry. For instance, if you visit your regular doctor during pre-COVID days, you don't see him 
wearing a N95 mask, you know, and your gown. And these are all made of plastic. If you look at the number of clinics in Singapore and you multiply them, and it is really a lot more plastic that we are using just in one day. And then, of course, it's medical research because this is a pandemic of a new kind. There are a lot of medical trials going on. How does plastic fit into those medical trials? Hmm. So for medical trials to go on, we need to have research lab equipment, we need to have test tubes, we need to have pipette, for instance, and also blood samples have to be kept somewhere, right? In plastic. In plastic, yes. Wow, that's a lot more than I imagined. Is this going to be the new norm? Well, for the moment, it looks like that is the new norm until the day comes when we have a vaccine. I've always seen plastic as a threat to the environment. It still is, but I'm starting to see how it could be a hero, especially in our fight against the pandemic. Does this mean that a plastic-filled future is inevitable? And what is it doing to our fight against climate change? And there's so much plastic! I'm on a mission to uncover the reason behind Singapore's massive plastic consumption during COVID-19. I've learned that some are due to unfounded fears and others a necessity. I'm on my way to the head office of Comfort Delgro, Singapore's largest taxi operator. In May, wow. they installed this the V-Shield. Not just one, but 400 of them in their taxis. Wow, it really covers a very large surface area. <laughs> That's right, as you can see, the, uh, the shield covers the driver's cabin area primarily. Our cabbies, the exposure to the risk of COVID-19 is rather high. This V-shield is essentially to further reduce this level of risk. So why use plastics instead of other materials? Well, as you can see, the plastic gives us a lot of flexibility when we design the whole thing. It allows the cabbie and the passenger to make payments. And as you can see from this fixed structure, it allows us to contour the plastic area and make sure that it really covers the essential area for the driver's area. The transparent plastic shield allows the cabbie to have full visibility of what's going around and that is a safety reason. These V-Shields are installed as part of a trial which will last for a few months. If well received by both cabbies and passengers, they will be fitted in all 10,000 comfort cabs. So if you have 10,000 taxis and they each has V-Shield, that is a lot of plastic. Yes, that's right. It's not just taxis. You can't miss it in Singapore. Plastic barriers are already installed between food court tables and in training cars. In fact, plastic has become so crucial that governments have halted their plans to reduce plastic consumption. South Australia, UK and India have held off imposing a ban on single-use plastics. Cities across the USA have also announced a hiatus on plastic bag bans. At home, firms were supposed to submit packing reduction plans to the government, but that's pushed back by a year to 2022. I want to know why plastic is the top choice material against the COVID virus. Can't we use other materials? For some answers, I've arranged to meet a polymer engineering expert at her lab in Nanyang Technological University. Professor Tan, I want to know why plastics is the choice material in our fight against COVID-19. I want to show you this two plastics, right? So they are different plastics, but you can see very clearly, visually, this is highly transparent and this is opaque, for example. This is one obvious difference. And the other difference you can feel. So this is hard. Mm -hmm. Right, and you can see this material. You can actually ban it. Oh wow! Right? Yeah, without breaking it. So they are the same plastics. They are same group of plastics, but you can just change the chemical structures, and you can have a totally different material. So plastic is a very versatile material. You have durability, you know, resistance to chemical, resistant to tear, lightweight, etc. So it's very difficult to find one material that could have all these properties. Okay, at the same time, it's easy to process. It's cheap to process and it's fast to process. A plastic-filled future? 
That's not an impossible thought. But now we're faced with a bigger problem, plastic waste. I'm meeting the founder of Green Nudge, a green NGO. He's bringing me to the beach. Oh my gosh. Not for a picnic, but to see for myself where all the plastic is ending up. Oh my gosh, there's so much garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it's everywhere. And there's so much plastic. This is very upsetting. This is very, very upsetting. Is yeah. there, there's more, there's more over there. That's right. The whole sea line, the whole beach. Oh my goodness, is this Singapore, really? This is not just trash washed up from neighbouring countries, but also from Singaporeans. Let's put on our gloves as well. So let me show you what has been generated uh, over the period of time. You notice this particular item, very common for all of us right now. I see a lot of food containers. Yeah. And how much more plastic have Singaporeans been using in the past four months than before? I've got friends in the F&B sector who have been telling me that the amount of disposables they've been using over the last two months was more than they used over the last two years. Because... Wow! That's uh, in the last two months, you've been using more than the last two years. So no. this is an iPad. So this is one of the items that have been co commonly generated and increasingly so during this pandemic for suppliers to ensure that items don't become damaged along the way. Well, as I'm well. I'm very guilty of that. I've I've ordered a lot of things online, so this could be me. This could be my trash. As you can see, really plastic doesn't just disappear into thin air. They literally just break into smaller and smaller beads itself. I understand why we may need to have the plastics for health and safety reasons, but also it's very disconcerting that all our hard-fought efforts in tackling our plastic issues might go to waste because of this pandemic. Can you tell me how many years or months have we fallen short on in this fight? So I think that it will really bring us back about two to three years worth of effort. Two to three years. That's right. Two to three years. That is so much effort gone into education which now is, is wasted. This shocking sight is the product of our thoughtless behaviour. When we litter it all over the streets, we don't realise it could be blown into drains, gutters, any of our waterways all these plastic might eventually land up in the sea. But you see, even if we dutifully bin our plastic waste, the problem doesn't go away. In Singapore, our discarded plastic is burnt. The incineration ash is then shipped to a man-made island called Samaka Landfill. But this solution is running short on time. Even before the pandemic, this landfill will run out of space by 2035. What's more, our plastic waste usage now is so high that our landfill might be filling up at an even faster pace. The thing is, why aren't we recycling our plastic waste? Six in ten Singapore households are found to be recycling regularly even before the pandemic. But only 4% of our total plastic actually ends up recycled. I want to find out the reason behind this large discrepancy. Armed with my COVID-19 plastics, I'm going to a recycling plant. Here at Lian Gim Trading, commercial plastic waste is collected, sorted and compacted before it is shipped overseas to their recycling plant in Vietnam for processing. I'm letting director Joe Tan look through my pile of plastics. So the good news is plastics mm -hmm. can be recycled if I put them into the blue bin, right? No, the blue bin is not everything inside all our plastic. There is paper, there is e-waste also. Some people throw e-waste, some people throw food uh, uh, containers inside with the food, everything. And then oh. you can't recycle, it's very dirty really. Oh. Mm -hmm. So if we throw a piece of plastic into the bin that's dirty, mm. we contaminate the whole bin? Yep. Does this happen often? Yes. How many percent of what is in the blue bin gets sent to the recycling mm. plants? 
I think 15%. 15%? 1.5. 1.5? Mm-hmm. Tell me you're joking. 1.5? Mm. Because when you need segregate all the thing, you need manpower. And Singapore manpower is very expensive. And you need space also. Because okay. you've got so many type of items. And there's another thing during COVID-19 that well, I've used a lot are these surgical masks. Mm -hmm. Can I recycle these? No, no. Why? The reason is because inside they have rubber mm. and then this mask inside got paper. We don't know who is the one who uses this also, this is a surgical mask. Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe sickness people or what, then this is cannot be recycled mostly. So and this is a medical use and then most of the things, they burn away. So every single surgical mask that is produced and worn mm -hmm. is sent away to be burnt? Yes. It just feels like this is a losing battle. For the little plastics that local recyclers collect, they are exporting to neighbouring countries for recycling. But even that is getting harder and harder to do. In 2018, China closed their doors to almost all foreign plastic waste. Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia followed suit. And now, with the pandemic, Plastic recycling takes another hit. Oil price drop 50%. 50%? Yeah. Plastic made from oil. Right. Okay. Then the raw material, the machine material will be dropping also about 50%. Then people are using raw material, not the recycling material. So virgin plastic is cheaper? Yes. So virgin plastic is cheaper now. So mm -hmm. does that mean nobody is buying recycled plastic? Yes. Okay. Something like you might buy 10, 30 cents per kilo. Now I have to sell 10 cents per kilo. But I can't sell. My cost, I'm going to lose money. How to sell? So then what happens to plastic recyclers? Um, very hard time. A lot of people closing now. With the closure of each recycling plant, our capacity to recycle plastic also reduces. And this is happening just when we most urgently need them to deal with our increasing plastic usage. Increased plastic use, plastic recycling crippled by the pandemic. The candle seems to be burning on both ends. Are we doing enough as consumers? Okay, so end of all this, you got two items correct. Only? Two bottles. Yep. Only two? We are in a plastic pandemic and time is running out. I want to know what we as consumers can do to help minimize plastic waste. So I've arranged to speak with domestic recycling expert, Lena To. Across one and a half years, she's worked with over 500 families to teach them how to conduct effective plastic recycling from home. It really bothers me that only 15% of all our plastic waste gets recycled. What can we do about it? Okay, why not you just start small? Start with things that maybe you use every day or you use all the time. For instance, um, especially during COVID, people take away more often and they also order from online deliveries. What you can do is that for disposable containers and bubble tea cups, they are also made from uh, PP plastic, they will be recycled. So just make sure you wash them off all the grease and they're good to go. Right. We should put only cleaned up plastics and recyclable plastics into the blue bin. This way, we will help reduce manpower required during the sorting process and increase our recycling rates. But the problem is, do Singaporeans know how to separate their plastic waste? We've prepared a wide range of plastic waste here, as you can see, and we're getting two Singaporeans to come in and pick the plastic they think will be recycled. Well, let's see how many they get right. Hi, hi, Rahim. Hi. Come in, come in. Hi. Hi, hi. I don't think I'm that knowledgeable, but I think I know just a bit. Uh, this one looks like quite possible. This looks quite possible. I think this is possible as well. This looks the same as this. I mean, it's clean and there's okay. nothing else there. Okay, yeah. uncontaminated. Just one form of plastic. Good. Hi, Anne. 
there's usually a number here, and I know that the lower the number, the more easily it can be recycled. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's put yeah. that into the basket. I think this is hard paper, so definitely can be recycled. Plastic bag. Ah, uh, right. There's yeah. a piece of okay, Lena, I'm going to pass you the basket now to see which items Rahim got correct. Okay, Rahim, you'll be excited to know that out of all this, you got one correct, which is this disposable container. Okay, this PET plastic bottle can be recycled as well. It's very, very common plastic actually. Even with all the liquid inside? Actually, this is pretty clean already. It's okay. just a few droplets of water is fine as mm -hmm. long as it's not food or like um, soft drinks. Or uh -huh. So for plastic items, right, there are actually seven recycling grids on them. Mm -hmm. So there's one to seven. Recycling operators in Singapore only select few types of plastics because they are considered of a higher value as compared to the rest of the plastics. As a rule of thumb, they collect one, two and five. So this is five. So this Gosh. will be recycled. Okay, so and out of all this, you got two items correct. Which only? is two bottles. Yep. Only two? Even this plate? I thought it was made of paper. So for this plate, right, it's actually made from biodegradable plastic. For materials like this, right, they actually have very different chemical makeup from that of traditional plastics. So the materials like these are actually meant to decompose in landfill environment. Bioplastics are alternative plastics that are usually made from plants instead of crude oil and are typically thought of as the greener option. But in Singapore, that might not be the case. In Singapore, we do actually burn our waste. So for these two plastics, because of their difference in chemical makeup, they are not meant for recycling. Even if you put it in the recycling bins, recycling operators will still incinerate them. Plastic like this, plastic bags, um, gloves, if you touch them, they are really soft. They belong to grade 4 plastic LDPE. So they can technically be recycled. But right now, they bring little value and they actually incur costs of the operators. So for this, try to reduce this usage as much as possible. Reuse where possible. What about this styrofoam? For styrofoam, right, it actually belongs to this grade 6 plastic. So okay. they used to be recyclable as well, but because it's very, very lightweight and inside them contains a lot of air, so the plastic inside is actually very, very little for them to recycle. So for this, you just throw it away in the bin. So it seems like we have to throw away a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's actually a very sad fact. So um, before uh, purchasing the product, I will see if there's another alternative. If that's there's different kind of packaging on it, I will compare which packaging can be recycled and which can't. If I have a choice, I will choose the one that can be recycled. Now that I know what to look out for, I can increase the chances of these plastics getting recycled. Yes, it takes a little bit more work to sort them out and clean them, but it is worth it if I'm going to live in a world where plastic use is going to grow. Because it is the one material that will keep us safe during a pandemic.